still owe me. But that's what man Warren Buffett says. Sell when a competitive advantage changes. I got a letter from that white lawyer. Now, one of the characters that the streets have wanted to see return since season 1, episode 8 is 2-Bit, a character who's loyal to the streets, the lifestyle and the consequences that come with it. He knows the street code, understands the importance of standing by his crew and supporting those he regards as family. He's also one of a very few characters that remained loyal to Tommy Egan towards the end of power when he could have easily have snitched to regain his freedom. Now, earlier in the season on The Crew Has A Podcast, Michael Rainey Jr. did tease 2-Bit was in season 3 and he did something that he hated and it's been a waiting game ever since to see what that was. And I want the keys to your ride. What? I can take mine. That's gotta be worth knowing where Tasha's hold up. So we are gonna get to the events of episode 9 and him taking Tariq's Porsche later on in this video, but after he cleverly navigated a release from jail with the help of Davis and Blanca Rodriguez, the questions for the best part of two seasons have been, where is 2-Bit? Why hasn't he come back to collect? Where has he been? Could he have gone to Chicago? Does he even know Tommy's alive or does he believe the news of reports about how Tommy's dead in New York? And where does he basically fit into the storyline in the Power Universe? And I do have some answers to some of those questions and fan theories, especially after some recent news on Force. So I'm going to be running through the evidence, facts and findings in terms of 2-Bit's backstory, what's been reported in the Power Universe news. We're then going to round things off with my own thoughts and theories about what's next for 2-Bit and why his storyline remains firmly on Power Book 2 Ghost and how Tariq could basically do with his help especially considering he has now lost his trust fund. But to paint the story of this video and why he continues to harass Tariq St. Patrick, we're going to take it all the way back to power. Now, Tubi's relationship with Dre wasn't always the best, although they were day ones, but being replaced by Cristobal definitely left a bit of a sour taste, which is something else I'm going to come to later on, this beef between Tubi and Cristobal. Now, later in power, Tubi was a part of Tommy's organization, along with Roberto, Spanky, BG and Poncho. But in a bit to save himself, Dre told Blanca Rodriguez, flipped the locations on his ankle monitor because he was stuffed in a trunk and taken to Tommy's warehouse. He gave her this information because with Tommy and his crew about to be swooped up by the feds, this would have left a clear path for Dre to take over under Jason Michich. We then saw Tubit, Spanky and Roberto being arrested and while he was in jail, Ghost asked him to do him a favour. I need you to do me a favour. Do you a favour? For what? Money and revenge. Now we're talking. He wanted him to take care of Dre for money and revenge, but shortly afterwards, Ghost met his demise before 2-Bit could collect his payment. Now, for the remainder of power, 2-Bit did remain in jail, even though he did have a chance to rat on Tommy and Ghost, which shows how loyal 2-Bit is to the street code. He's a street soldier, and that's where we pick up with his storyline in Power Book 2 Ghost. I don't need to pay a lawyer to tell you no. I could do that for free. No person shall be compelled in any criminal case to be a witness against himself. You memorized the Fifth Amendment. Got a lot of time to read in here. One of the things you have to love about 2-Bit is, he's not just any ordinary street soldier, he's very intelligent. But there are different levels to intelligence. For example, he may be book smart and he may be a street soldier, but can he lead an organization? This requires a level of intelligence which is slightly different, and maybe something they'll explore more of in Episode 10 and Season 4 alongside Tariq St. Patrick. But with the help of Davis and Blanca Rodriguez, who had a bone to pick with Cooper Sacks, they told 2-Bit what he can get away with saying on the stand, which isn't exactly perjury. Tommy Egan? Who that? And so just like that, 2-Bit was free. Now, he later came for Tariq St. Patrick at Stansfield because Ghost promised him money if he took care of Dre. And considering Ghost is dead, his debt was passed on to Tariq. His first payment was 24k, but considering 2-Bit helped him with bars, 2-Bit said he wanted at least another 20 to 50k more, but this was the last time we heard from 2-Bit in Season 1, although we did get a very brief mention in Season 2. Tariq and Brayden's relationship wasn't exactly in the best of places after Brayden was manipulated by Kane, which ended up with Tariq being charged with a double homicide, but they did eventually work things out, but this is where Tariq told Brayden about how it was a choice between him and Jabari and how he didn't want him to be involved because at the time, 2-Bit was trying to extort him and he didn't want Brayden being caught up in his mess. And this is the last time we heard about 2-Bit before Season 3. Now, one thing we can always be sure of is Tariq will always have to deal with multiple issues at the same time and if he gets rid of one, another one will take his place. And that's the nature of this game, but also life in general. But unfortunately in the street game, the price you pay is either death or jail. But in terms of 2-Bit's return, just as things couldn't get any worse for Tariq, he was back with a letter from Cooper Sachs. Sachs was continuing to cause chaos, and 2-Bit's letter had Tasha's location, but in exchange 2-Bit wanted 100k on top of what Tariq already owed him for saving his life in Season 1. Now Tariq said he can get him some guns and drugs, but for Tasha's location, 
2-Bit wanted it all, including his Porsche. Now, one thing 2-Bit won't be doing is going over to Chicago and joining Tommy on Powerbook 4 Force. We all know how Tommy lost his right-hand woman in Liliana at the end of Season 1, and it can look like a bit of a coincidence with 2-Bit and Tommy coming back at the same time, but the actors of Force have completely shut down the idea of 2-Bit heading over to Chicago, and based on 2-Bit saying Tariq owes him 100k plus product and guns, I do think this time he's gonna be back. Now, what this means for Tommy on Force and who his team consists of, that will be JP, Diamond and DMAC, although he definitely has other plans for DMAC, but I'm sure we all know he's gonna get sucked into the street life in one way or another. Now, he'll probably have a few others who he'll be working with, which includes the Mexican cartel, with Maria Garcia and Miguel Garcia, but we are gonna learn more when we see that first teaser trailer for Season 2, which I do believe is gonna drop on Monday. But what does this mean for 2-Bit on Powerbook 2 Ghost? Let's look at it this way. Tariq's trust fund is gone, Western Holdings is a Ponzi, and so does it make sense for Tariq to go back to Stansfield at some point in Episode 10 or Season 4? Probably not. There is literally nothing there for him, because all he was there for was to graduate so he could inherit his trust. But now that's gone, what's left for him and Brayden, considering they've chosen this life? The streets. But in the streets, you need a team, and at this moment in time, with Sax causing chaos from beyond his grave, with the drug operation, with his letters, Tariq definitely will need all the help he can get, and so I do wonder where 2-Bit fits into the story. Tariq can't just keep paying 2-Bit every time he turns up, 24k, 100k, and whenever else he asks him to give him money. Let's not forget, he's also paying Rashad Tate 5k a week in Bitcoin, pushing weight for Nomar, and dealing with whatever else is happening in his life. At some point, Tariq is going to have to get a grip of things, which at this moment in time, he definitely doesn't have. And after he got his ass handed to him by Kane, maybe 2-Bit can teach him how to fight. Now, one storyline they can revisit with 2-Bit is his beef with Cristobal, who is the head of the Tainos, who at this moment in time is in prison, which is from one of the Courtney Kemp's Q&A lives that she did in Season 2. But we all know how power works. Ghost moves at a very quick pace, and if they want a character to be released from prison to further the storyline elsewhere, then they'll have them released on a technicality, snitching, or whatever else. But the history between 2-Bit and Cristobal certainly runs deep, especially after 2-Bit killed Lorenzo on the streets. Cristobal wanted Dre to take 2-Bit out, and we eventually saw him replace 2-Bit as Dre's right-hand man. He was also behind the plot to burn Tommy's warehouse, and we certainly can't forget Cristobal's role and involvement in Julio's death, one which I think to this day many of us power fans really would like to see avenged. So if Tariq's trust fund is dead, and if Western Holdings is banned, I do think naturally we're gonna see a transition into the streets in episode 10 and season 4, and I for one wouldn't mind seeing Cristobal return, because he does add that bit of tension based on his past in power with 2-Bit. Now something else I wouldn't mind seeing is 2-Bit vs Kane, which I do think could be a real good battle between two real street soldiers. Now whether that happens, who knows, but definitely something we can dive deeper on in the next few weeks. But that's a breakdown of 2-Bit's backstory and where we are at this moment in time, but more importantly where his story could go in the future in the Power Universe. I do think his story remains on Ghost and not Force, and I'm sure he's gonna be back to collect from Tariq. But Tariq does need to do something about 2-Bit, and if I were in Tariq's shoes, I'd definitely find a way to get 2-Bit on side. But drop all your thoughts down below and let me know what you think is next for 2-Bit. And as always, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you next time.